Hello. Hiya. How are you doing? I'm fine. I can't believe how fast the week goes though. It's back round to sort of videoing this again. It's absolutely crazy because, well, I, I called it off yesterday, which I'm sorry for, but yeah, puppy and an insomniac husband meant that it wasn't going to happen no matter what. And um, so here we are and I'm late again, which seems to be, uh, it's going to be on my gravestone. She's late again. <laughs> How's your week been? It's been it's it's been good. It's been different because it's half term, so every day oh, is yeah. like a weekend day. So you're sort of thinking you're thinking it's a Sunday, and actually it's Tuesday. And you should be in the studio. You know. <laughs> yeah. Think, oh, what, back in the studio. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? I know. So have you have you been catching up with any of the course, the free courses that are on? Oh, I've really enjoyed I've really enjoyed the Nicholas Wilton one so far. Um, Me too. And I'm really looking forward to the colour bit today. So that'll give people a yeah, I am. idea. Because I don't know about you, but I understand all the value and the contrast mm -hmm. drawing the eye and all this. But yeah. then I want to know how you balance that with when you've got colour. That was one of my questions, actually, when when they invite questions um, <clears throat> during the live conversation yeah. that Nick Wilton does. Um, I actually put, you know, how do we translate this across to colour? Is it colour depth or colour boldness or to muted colour? Yes, yeah, such exactly to, to you know, yeah. when you talk about the quiet conversation. So if I explain um, so he he was describing it in terms of conversation with lots and lots of colour and big bold um value well, it was in there. Contrast, wasn't it? the contrast and the contrast that that kind of having a quiet a, a quiet contrast as well i thought it was really valuable for um to watch him actually work on people's work and and just show how you can really lift a piece with with really good contrast right. and it, was, it was so good i didn't um, i haven't seen i haven't seen the chat he did um, yesterday yet so I'm going to I've got to watch that recording but I, I think you'll find that really interesting yeah because I was also watching the um Gabe, Lib Gabe Lipper one and I listened to his yesterday's one this morning and he was talking about um hierarchy and he was talking about you don't in terms of color you don't need much I hope I get it around the right way saturated color yeah. to balance with a huge area of unsaturated. So okay. that might be the answer in a way in terms of yeah. if you have if you have too much saturated, it might throw that contrast or the balance. Yes. Okay. I think you're talking about So a little bit of saturation is more powerful well, it, I think than a whole load of unsaturated. Yes. Well if it's teamed with unsaturated if it's yeah just, yeah if it's all just saturated you get more balance when you have a combination of the two i think and then yeah. you're talking about um i'm looking around at my notes groupings so thinking in terms of one one um image one say figure versus a small group of a group of figures but don't make the small group of figures the same size as the big image that you're trying to draw the eye to. It was really clever, but you didn't draw it out as much. And you've frozen again. <laughs> I'm gonna go into pause. We're back again. Hello. Yeah, technical issues. issues. Technical issues, too, right? I think you've frozen so many times. Yeah. I know, I know. We should start singing that song. Let it be. Anyway. Anyway. Yeah. So Gabe Lipper, you were about to tell me. Yes. Well, he's been doing um, he's been doing a, a free course alongside the well at the same time as Nicholas Wilton. Mm. And he approaches it quite in a different way, he's a colorist, and he does more figurative work. Um, yeah. And that's really interesting just to see how he terms things. He calls it slightly different things. Um but it's interesting how he talks about balance and what is a balance and things yeah. like that. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to the next ones of both of them, actually. 
to see how yeah, I really I, I really like both of them both yeah. as artists and actually as tutors I think they deliver um, the subject really well and explain things really well um, and actually even though we've been both been doing this for a time yeah. and there's always something new to be learned about it all there is so so much insight from other people it's fantastic and I don't think it hurts to actually just keep yourself open to refreshing mm. some of the things and looking at your work with a different um you know viewpoint mm. so yeah no that, that's been that's been good but actually it has it. yeah and I'm, I'm really pleased with myself that I've managed to keep on track with the 100 day project and also with the Nick Wilson Wilton course um Go on, sorry. Yeah, but I haven't I haven't actually posted since week one of um, the hundred day project. So look at that. What a that's my that's, beautiful. that's my hundred day project so far. Wow, that is something special. Maybe you can think if there'll be a hundred of those, that's twenty hold on, that's nineteen so far. You have to think of the date plus one, isn't it? Because it started on yeah. the first, so yeah, yeah. So, um, really so I've got all of all of mine are in my sketchbook, and I'm really pleased. But I have veered off. I did ten days of flowers, and now I'm just doing ten days of sketchbook color work and things like that. So I'm going wherever the mood takes me, and just doing sketchbook work because um, I felt that I was really limited with flowers. Yeah. It well, just felt I really think, limiting. I think the aim is to just do something for it's a practice for a hundred days. Yeah, it's just the practice for 100 days, which is, is actually really nice. So, yeah, so feeling on track a bit more, which is nice. And what about you? Yeah, no, I you... feel totally on track. I was sort of thinking ahead, thinking, right, I've got sales coming up. I need to think about having paintings finished. And, mm. you know, and also thinking, you know, some of my pieces may not be framed in time if, well, they, they must be framed in time. It would just be a bit quick to get them framed once the framers are open again. You know, yeah. Yeah. Shut. But um, no, I'm prepping some more boards and looking forward to sort of getting stuck in with some more, you know, a different a different slant. You know, because I've been doing the wetlands, you know, the yep. levels, but I've also quite enjoy all the branches and views through. So I've been yeah. working up a few of those actually do it that's really I, nice i was just thinking we'll be back to when we go back to face-to-face -to -face, um <laughs> things it would be really nice but we'll also be i mean i was just thinking the other day of all the funny things you hear when you're at a sale and you sort of think oh, oh i mean it's things like you have people that are really come in and they're interested and they talk about the process Engaged. and your sketchbooks and they you know, admire work and you think oh that's nice you know oh it was really interesting to talk to people yeah and then, and then I don't know about you you get some people that sort of look at it and walk about two foot away from you and then go well oh, I don't know hmm. I don't know about that a five-year-old could have a five-year-old could have painted that and a part of me is thinking mm. well that's no uh, that's up to them but at the same time thinking I'm only two foot away <laughs> You have to be so vocal. There's actually there's a really good book called something along the lines of why a five year old couldn't have painted that. Um, and I think I must buy. Well, I've got I've got a copy, but I must get a copy over to you for, at some stage so that you can um, we can have pithy answers because I you know my abstract work and actually some of my more representational representational half abstract with floral stuff. People will stand and go. They don't, I don't see it. it. <laughs> Not that they don't see it. I mean, there was there was lovely. I think it was Peacock Art Trail that yeah. we were doing, and it was a really beautiful gallery out in Kington Langley, which is a um, beautiful village. And so you do get kind of gentrified older ladies coming to visit in groups who have opinions, and um, which is lovely. But sometimes their opinions are to let you know how rubbish that is and to stand there and go oh I don't like that and you go yeah I painted that it's interesting to have your reaction oh I'm sorry I don't like it but I don't like it See, I think <laughs> so, you don't have to like it it's no. 
and that's it. People apologize for not liking it, but isn't that yeah. the purpose of art to generate yeah. a reaction? Yeah, exactly. And quite often I'll say that and other people will stand and go, what is it? <laughs> well, at least it's, it's fine. At least uh, it's generating that response. There are yeah. Yeah. yeah actually I don't I don't mind either reaction because yeah I quite like it when they do the what is it because I, I I will then say to them well what what do you see in it because you know it's not about me it's it's what reaction they give um and that can lead to sweet conversations even if they still don't get it at the end of the conversation but yours at least they can kind of see what yours is they, they can see it's a landscape or a seascape. I don't yeah. think they necessarily see it at the same scale as what I'm visualising it as. Mm. Because mm. I don't put um, people or things, or don't tend to put people or things in my work. So yeah. People can either see it, and, well, I leave it open to interpretation. So that's a way yeah. I put my work is. But we'll see yeah. how it goes. But the other thing I was thinking is when we're doing these sales, do you do you just paint in advance? I mean, preparing for a sale, do you just paint and just show what you've painted? Or do you plan to have a variety of stuff or subjects to attract people? Do you, is there any plan? I've, I've done both. And the work that sells best is the work I just paint. Same here. I've done both and I've realised that actually when I've painted thinking, oh, I'll just do a couple of smaller, cheaper, quick things. Yeah. They're just a bit like not really me. And therefore I think the viewer can see that. Whereas oh. when I've done something with an intention of really enjoying my work, they're the pieces that sell. I think it's not necessarily scale. If I, it's the approach, isn't it? Because- Yeah, so yeah, exactly. If I approach something with intention, how I actually want, you know, in terms of my art, it yeah. doesn't matter. I just make sure I do a variety of sizes now. I do that, yes. like I use that process on a variety of sizes rather than thinking, oh, I've just been working on big pieces. Oh, I've got to quickly rip off a few small pieces. I don't. Work with, I tend to mix it up as I'm going along anyway. Yeah. Um, mm. Maybe in the back of my mind, I'm thinking people like a choice. I don't mm. know. Or sometimes I Yeah, but I can see, you know, I can see the work behind you. Yeah. And I can see that you've got, I mean, they're both, all three of those pieces are relatively small. Yeah. In, in terms of other work that you've done yeah but I can see that they might be more accessible for people you know with smaller homes which let's face it most of us not there aren't that many of us who live in a mansion yeah. so you know that uh, that is accessible isn't it it's access making accessible your yeah. work so that people who love it can have a piece no matter how big or small their room is exactly and a lot of people that actually like art or enjoy buying art have already bought lots and I think that's yeah. one of the things that people say, oh, I just have got no space. I'm already rotating yeah. in paintings. Yeah. Um, and you totally understand that, but they tend, they tend to buy, you know, cards or something like that to sort of- Yeah, you know, actually that's always really nice. I love it when people say, oh, I, I really like that. I, you know, do you have it in a card? Say, yes, I do. And that's, that's really nice to be able to share that because you know, that might go in a little frame or it might be, you know, blue tacked upon the fridge or something, or even, but it's- Or even sent to a friend, you know. Yeah, yeah, well, that's, I suppose, the purpose of a card, but <laughs> quite often I'll buy a card and keep it for myself because I really like it. And so, so it's a little I've, taster of the image, isn't it? Yeah, I've got quite a few, a few cards. I've got several mm. postcards and um, I've got one of yours. And I've got a little small paint, a small painting of yours. Yes, you have actually. That's very, very sweet too. Yeah, that's very yeah, sweet. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I think you're right. If it's a genuine piece, no matter what size it is, 
it's more likely to sell than if you kind of thought what does sell because I've had you know I've had this conversation with my husband as well and he says oh you know that sometimes I did a series of small individual um flowers in pasto so so quite thick yeah just really trying to get the color and the feel like the heaviness of you know kind of when you've got a, a nice say for example an allium and it's a nice big round headed um, flower and the stem is quite heavy trying to convey the weight of the flower as well as kind of you know they've sold really well so um and have been they sold well at, at um art fairs and also off my website which was lovely so hub said to me oh so you should do a whole series of those and i was like but i've done them now yeah you just like, yeah but they sold really really well yeah they did but I've done them now yeah and I've got, my, <laughs> and I've got prints now that can actually you know be used yeah. but I think yeah. also but it's, it's really hard not to get into that whole kind of well that worked therefore I'll do 10 million of them and let's hope that everybody in the world likes them and so I just realized I look like bungle from thingy when I do that don't I just notice myself you should, you should I'm just about to post another Instagram post for, for the last um episode not episode last um zoom chat we had yes i'm going to sort of i've done a little thing and it's all about our poses because <laughs> oh we're, we're sort of ooh, 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 ah, uh, you know all these <laughs> movements we make so i've done lots of those so i'm going to do that so i'll have another one now i'll have the, the bumble yeah <laughs> yeah i think you know, with, yeah with the with the art when with them um, yeah. your art if you're creating work that you that comes from within you, I think you can be yeah. more confident about it. So when you have people saying, "Oh, I don't like that," I think it gives you a you know more armor in terms of well, yeah. that I, that was really important. That I've done that on purpose. I've not. You don't feel as if you you know you're conning anyone or not yeah. conning the wrong word. You're not. Um, how do I describe it? You're not showing a just a painting that's sort of super. It's not superficial painting. It's not a deck yes. piece. It's it's yeah. something with a bit more authenticity because of the way you come about painting it. So then, when you don't like it, you think, well, that's really painting. interesting way of phrasing it because I think when it's a decorative piece if you do it intentionally oh more people will like this and therefore it's decorative and it has slightly less of your soul whereas you can do a decorative piece that's still coming from that's still genuine yeah and that that definitely comes across when you're trying to convey something I think than if you're just kind of oh well this vase of flowers will look quite nice it's different yeah, yeah it's different and then um... But sometimes it's difficult to notice, you know, and I think that's sometimes when people see differences in prices. If mm. someone's just sort of quickly whipped something off because it's, you know, they think it will sell. Yeah. There can be as much time and input necessarily into it, put into it. Um, yeah. And that maybe addresses the balance of um, how much something costs or the amount of paint you've used or the fact that you've been working on it on and off for the last sort of month rather than it's a sort of, oh yeah yeah oh yeah <laughs> or it's not just a quick you know two hour piece you know <laughs> yeah ripped off for the you know sake of the sale so um mm. yeah oh interesting isn't it sort of uh, I wonder I wonder how many people I suppose particularly people that are starting off are swayed by sales in what way? Oh, you mean that sells really well, therefore I'll do more of it. And they let the sales direct their art rather than the other way around. I think it's a dangerous, dangerous um, road to, to go down as well, because everything evolves. And if actually you try to repeat and repeat and repeat, you just get a watered down version of something that originally was lovely. And now it's just, if you're doing it, kind of by rote then it becomes more soulless and therefore and also it's a bit boring it's 
yeah it's tedious well, it's how do you ever grow your practice i know because i mean my work's changing all the time there are elements yeah. that is different but i think particularly in the last year my work has really um evolved i'll say evolved it's not changed it's still landscapes but the way i'm approaching things has evolved and Definitely. that I mean, naturally goes into your work and i mm. And I think it's, I always like it when you go to um, maybe an annual event and you turn up and you see artists you haven't seen for a whole year. And yeah. you're working and you go, oh, wow. God, your yeah. colour palette's really changed or, oh, you're doing these. Oh, that's, you know, and it's really interesting mm -hmm. to see what has um, interest them as well. So you go around and you see mm -hmm. how their work's moved on. And that, mm -hmm. I think, is must be really interesting. So people... I just hope that pe when people sort of um, get to know who you are, that they enjoy the journey with you. They like yeah. they like how your work is evolving. I mean, they might exactly, up, but you might pick up more people. It depends where your work goes. Exactly. I mean, I think I had this conversation with Jill Silversides um, about her. They they work in glass. Her and her husband yeah, lovely. Lovely, Rob. Yeah. And the pieces are beautiful. And last year they did a series of black, really dramatic pieces. Yeah. And the a lot of her, is she Armageddon, Armageddon series. She yes. Armageddon series, yeah. And actually, I think they named them by getting drunk and listening to a Black Sabbath album or something. <laughs> um, I think the names came from different things. But yes, it, well, it is the Armageddon series. And I remember seeing that because obviously Glass... Um, some people just look at it as decorative rather than art mm -hmm. and just seeing the depth and the shapes and the, the, and I remember walking in to the gallery and, and looking and saying wow that's really you know you've really put your heart on the line there and, and, and the work is beautiful actually I must do a link to, to um, the silver sides because that 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 was very dramatic and I could just see it you know it's very New York loft apartment as well and it's very brave because if you're known, very. if you're known for doing something that is more, um, I suppose, not run of the mill. That's wrong because it's her, their work isn't because it's woven. No, most isn't it? Yeah. Um, but more, I suppose, accessible. Yes, and also sort of the colours are, are more sort of bright and cheerful. People like colour yeah. and glass and seeing light through it. But the yeah. Armageddon Black series was opaque. You couldn't see through yeah. it at all, could you? Yeah. So, um, yeah, no. Really. Absolutely. Really dramatic. But that, I mean, you know, kind of standing, listening to the comments of that going, oh, I like these bits, which, you know, and then looking. But I know that they had quite a few people walk in and just didn't even see anything else other than the Armageddon, that they were so taken with it. So it's, um, it's the, 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 almost the strange the differences of reactions to one piece it, it is interesting it's really interesting and also you know old ladies have the loudest voices there is no getting away from it <laughs> <laughs> and there's no subtlety no. <laughs> i wonder if that'll be us when we walk into a gallery and don't like that <laughs> we do it already don't we <laughs> yeah yeah but uh, with a cup of tea afterwards not at the oh, time yeah. mm -hmm. Yeah, no, actually, yes. We don't stand in front of it again in a very loud voice. That is absolutely rubbish or anything like yeah. that. I think nowadays yeah. it's sort of, now you go in and you can actually try and see where the artist is coming from. And you yeah. might not, it might not be something that sort of floats your boat, so to speak. Yeah, but you can but appreciate, appreciate the work. It. Yeah, and I think that's, and the intention. that's the difference. Sometimes people are just looking for something that, I don't know, if they, they're not, necessarily interested in the process or anything they're just interested in sort of what it looks like and how whether it, it goes with the curtains yeah whether it fits with I've actually I it. have actually had that I you know comment oh I really like that piece and I get it but to be honest it clash with my living room so I couldn't well I've had, I've had a piece I've had a piece bought at the Peacock um so yeah and they were attracted to it because it's picked up some of the colours that they had just used in their decoration. Um, and they even brought in one of the cushions to show me. They came back 
to show me the, the colour. But the piece was really quite um, abstract for me and um, quite, I suppose quite modern, quite contemporary. contemporary. Yeah. And it was, so it wasn't, they didn't buy it to match. I think they just were attracted to the colour. Because that was that colour was on their mind anyway from redecorating, yeah. Okay. So it was quite okay. interesting because I, if you sort of shows you shouldn't pigeonhole people. No. So if I would sort of, I would have picked a sort of younger couple to maybe pick it because I thought yeah. it would appeal to a more um, contemporary sort of younger profile, you know. But yeah, it it obviously it's just taste. It's nothing to do with age, taste. Yeah, absolutely. Good taste it transcends age. Yeah, and choices. I'm going to say. Actually, that's the conversation for another day. But, you know, when you're doing marketing and everything else, and when you have to kind of narrow down to who is your ideal customer and who are you, who are you pitching to when, you, you know, you do well, these things, that's a fascinating thing in you itself. You should do, because I've just been listening to a, a course by Jodie King, I think it is. Jodie King, King, I believe. It's an Instagram one. I'm just okay. trying to find. Yeah, Jodie King on Instagram. I will. Mm -hmm. But she's been running a a, a a course as well. So it's right. It's on at the moment. And the first sort of session was all about making sure you're. In, it's all about how to do well on Instagram. And okay. It talked about how to use your analytics on your right. profile. This is definitely and, something I should watch. Well, yeah, I mean, because you can go to your, if you're on a business profile, you can yeah. get insights and you can find out who your actual audience is and their age ranges. And their age ranges? Age ranges, I'd never realized. Not even that. slightly invasive, is it? I know, it's ridiculous when you think about it, but mine were 45 and over basically. So it was 45, you know, all the way up to 60, but so I had 45 to 50 something, 55 to 60 something, 65 plus. So it was three age oh. categories was my market that people were majority and something like 70% or 80% were women. So I, I mean, I think that's it's, social media for you, but um, I thought that was really interesting. Age was really interesting. And also it gave you the time of, you could work out what time of day was the best time to post in terms of when they were looked at. And I thought, oh, that's interesting. Really it interesting. is interesting. And that's just one little video. She does like a proper course that you pay for and this is her free bit. But I just thought even that- You can glean so much from these free bits and then, you know, eventually- Well, decide- I mean, it's like the Nicholas Wilton course. I gleaned so much last year from his course and I'm doing the free course again. And I think this year I'll probably pay to do his full course. Yeah. It's um, mm. well, I, I think I would if if I could justify the money, but I, I can't at the moment. Yeah. yeah, I can't either. But I think as we both know, I've been feeling quite stifled with my work lately. So I think it might just it might be the thing help that be well worth it. I see I'm at the moment. My work is flowing. You're flowing. Yeah, absolutely. So I don't feel I suppose that's it. I can't justify it because I don't feel I need you're not in that place yeah and you might never need it um but I think yeah exp experimenting um I think is the way to go for me at the moment maybe no, it should be really rejuvenate fun. my work yeah yeah it'll be great it'll be and then you have all this work for all these sales that are coming up you'll have yay yeah. and then I can profile everybody yay <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's weird yeah, I can't believe we've got to the end of our chat without mm. you crashing again. <laughs> I know, it's so good. Three crashes, in a, was it three or four? Possibly four. I, well, I paused the recording until you got back proper, so no one would have known. You would have spliced it all together really professionally. <laughs> yeah, that's another Instagram lesson I need to take, isn't it? <laughs> how to splice it together in a nice fashion. I haven't, I, I must admit as well that last week's um, 
post is slightly late, so I apologise for that. So that'll go up today, which is Thursday, the whatever right. day, 18th. I've not, I've, I've not advertised the last one yet, so um, leave it till tomorrow. <laughs> I think I might do that. All right, so what's on your what's on the agenda very quickly for this week? This week, um, I've got all the courses... I've been preparing for a free Zoom workshop I'm doing for a local group. That's um, nice. Yeah, I'm doing it as a trial just to see how Zoom works and whether I can actually... Interact. Know, yeah, and whether it's got the sort of basis for a workshop, but I don't know. We'll see how that one goes. Okay. And then I've been prepping, actually finishing off paintings and prepping lots of um, canvases and boards ready for an onslaught. But looking out the window, it looks a nice blue sky and I might just go out sketching instead. What about you? That sounds good to me. Um, yeah, same as you in regard to the courses. I am just really enjoying and getting loads and loads out of them. So I'm very inspired to use my sketchbook loads with them, which is really good. Um, so I'm continuing with those. I think I may well sign up to the Nicholas Wilton one. I'll have a discussion. I hope you know Just, somebody that's done it. Know someone from, know. Yeah, personally that's actually done yeah. it. Well, I, I, yeah. So we'll see. I, I'm having, yeah, I'm having, because the money is the money, which we don't have. But I also think it may well be the investment that helps me kind of yeah. find my space back in, which would be really good. And um, what else is on the agenda for this week? Well, while it's dry, I'm going to walk the dog. The small dog likes her walks and they're very good for me too. So we're going to try and do some of that. And I've been taking lots and lots of photos of um, the Wiltshire landscape as I've been walking. And just the colours are just so pretty. So they've been informing my workbook as well, but I'm not going to turn into a landscape artist because I think that's not really me. Um, you never know yeah. if you do if you do the Nicholas Wilton course. You never know what you'll end up at. <laughs> I know, I know. Who knows? Who knows? So yeah, that's all on the agenda this week. And I'm now going to go away and look at Jody King as well, and yeah. see if I can get some insights because also my Instagram posting has been a bit fail of late. So, as well, the young luck. kids say. Yeah. Good luck, and um, we'll see, see you soon. Anyway, cheerio for now. Bye. All right. Bye. Lots of love. Bye.